guys, I'm Vulture Culture, and welcome to tonight's live stream. We're going to be programming with the Roland PG-1000, controlling this D50. You can see it's just off camera here. And we're going to be making some cool sounds. So this is kind of a follow-up to a three-hour tutorial I did on how to program the Roland D50. I'm going to be moving kind of quickly, making new sounds as fast as I can. Um, but of course, if you're here in the chat tonight, please slow me down and ask any questions you have. Um, because that's the purpose of these streams is to help sort of educate and help supplement the video I've already done. But if I miss something or you feel lost and you're watching this video in the future, I would just recommend going to the definitive tutorial on programming the Roland D50. The link is in the description. How's it going, everybody? We got Nikki here. Tokyo Scarab, welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. How's it going? Definitely an Apocalypse Berserk vibe. Um, so anyways, let's get started. So I'm going to pull up a new patch and we have this. Just our very basic um, piano patch that happens when you load up a new patch. And I'm going to go to the select, the common select up here. What that means is that's controlling the parameters that are uh, for all of the four partials. And we just need to set the structure. And in this case, I want to do... What do I want to do? I want to do a, uh, let's see, I want to do partials that are um, both PCM. So that's going to be structure six here. I've got the manual down here so I can look that up. So now we should have two PCM samples. But you'll notice that, interestingly, we're just hearing the same thing. And that's because we also need to adjust the part balance and set that to 50. One of the only things you can't do directly on the hardware here, and I should say too, that this hardware is recreated exactly one-to-one -one with the Roland Cloud VST. So if you have the Roland Cloud version of this, it's exactly the same as what you're seeing on the hardware here. And also, if you don't wanna buy a PG-1000, but you do have a D50 or a D550 or something like that, um, you can just get a controller panel, they're free, and it's also a really great way to program one of these guys. So a cool thing to do. But anyways, one thing you need to do is just go to key mode and um, change that to dual. And so now we have access to all four of those. Um, so we've got the structure and the part balance figured out here. We need to go into the partials and adjust the level of everything. So I'm going to put those to about 70. I don't know how well, can you guys let me know how well you can see that? On some of my tests, it wasn't coming through all the way. What's important is what's happening with these uh, knobs, or and by knobs, I mean faders. Um, but so we're going to do that. Another thing we need to do is change the key follow mode. So on default, you'll notice that the piano is working. But that sample of the marimba or whatever is not. Um, so we just need to set the key follow to one real quick. Um, now you can hear that it's tracking uh, properly. Um, so I believe I've done everything right here. We got partial select, make sure our cutoff frequencies all the way. And once again, we should be partial balance is right. Structure should be six. And I think we should be good to program. So we got this partial mute button. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn off all the partials except for lower one. And um, move over here and bring up the volume a bit. Can't see it on the screen. The good thing is all this is doing here is just echoing what you're seeing me do and giving me a number, right? Um, but essentially, you don't ever really need to look at this, and I don't find myself looking at it often, except maybe if I want to have the exact same value across multiple partials. But essentially, it's just move these faders to where you want them to go. And um, so right now, because this is red, that means we're working on lower partial one. And what I want to do is get one of those cool wavetables that we had my inspiration for what the sound I wanted to start with making was something like um, the famous sound that sold the synth, Digital Native Dance. Now, I'm not going to try to recreate that. Why would I? The best version of it is just the preset in the synth, right? 
But that sort of thing where we've got a wavetable that sort of fades in late and using those spectral waves. So we're going to start with the, for no reason other than I feel like it, um, the wavetable that comes in late. So let's go ahead and try and find a wavetable we like. Wow, that's terrible. Turn the volume down a bit. Those uh, spectral waves are brutal. Here we go. So I want one of these loops. We might as well use this one. In my opinion, this will do the trick. So what we want to do is um, we, we have no way to filter that sample in this synthesizer. It would take uh, a few years, what would it be, four years for the JD-800 to come out where you could actually filter the samples. In this, though, all we really have control over is the amplifier. So this is easy, though. We can just go to the envelope here and increase the time. And bring down level two, I think. So that, that should fade it in and fade it out, something like that. It seems like the delay or the decay stage here takes a little bit longer. So we will do that. Um, also, guys, this would be a great time. Um, once I'm done with this sound, I just want to start with the sound for the fuck of it. Um, but once I'm done with this one, I'm going to need some requests, some viewer requests for types of sounds you'd like to hear. So this would be a great time to drop that in the chat. That way we can kind of uh, come up with some stuff. And if anybody has any questions, please let me know too. I, I want to go kind of fast because you guys have probably seen the people who are here in the chat right now have seen me do this a few times now. But, you know, for someone who is new, um, please don't feel bad asking any questions. Uh, so we're kind of done with this one, except I want to change the key follow and turn it off, actually, because just like in digital native dance, I want those no noises to not track the keyboard. I want it to just be in the background. We can control the course pitch. Like if we want to get like a really crazy, like... I think that's super cool, right? Because getting those like almost like wave sequency type sounds, right? Uh, Crystal Love, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Uh, so why don't we mute that for now and move on to another partial. So let's make sure we can hear that one. So we're back to this like little marimba sound. Let's find one of those spectral waves. Okay. Let's take that one, but bring the course tuning way down. And we'll just add a little bit of release to that. That's time five, right? So little recap on the six envelopes here. Easy thing to remember is we've got our times up here. This is how long it, it takes to get between each stage of the envelope. And then down here we have the levels. But luckily, the way the default patch is set up, we can always use T1 as attack and T5 as release, and we don't even have to worry about anything else. We can just, you know, use those real quick. I'm going to do something different with this patch, too, um, compared to some of the other patches I've done, which is instead of mucking about with the core like the um balance between tones and stuff like that oh i need to adjust that 
probably soon. Um, I'm going to control all of these independently, just using the level control here. I think that's more simple. Um, uh, thank you for the idea, Dub. I'll get to that. You've got the first one, so I'm going to go with that. So that's a really cool sound. Plenty of release is nice. So let's mute that and move on to upper one and see what we have here. All right, so we need to get something that will add some amount of weight to the sound because right now it's sounding really, um, what did I say, like maybe too thin. So we need some sort of wave in here that's going to give it some girth. So around here is where we get the looping wavetables. That one's not bad. I like this one, like a really big, um, just a really big kind of, it's, it's a little organy for my boy Jim. actually very beautiful. We'll add it to just a little bit of attack. A little bit more release. Kind of this big weighty sound to it and we could drop it. Down to C2. Now, if we unmute partial two, we can kind of hear how these two sounds sound together and kind of mix partial two into partial three. I'm gonna add that same attack to it just a little bit. Just slightly less level and a little less release. Just a little crazy. Really get that low end in there. Okay, so we've got that. Now, why don't we mute both of those and open up the uh, partial, the fourth partial here and see what we got. And do I have that unmuted? I didn't, that's why back to a sort of boring uh, marimba sound. Let's go ahead and pick something else of these looped wavetables. Is the key scaling good? Yes, it is, it's perfect. So um, you can, uh, the key scaling is for the, um, the actual notes of the synth. Like, so unlike basically every other synthesizer I have in this room, you can tell the synth to ignore what the keyboard is doing or even hyper accentuate it. So I might as well show that off real quick. Um, so I'm gonna just keep doing this little fifth note thing. If I adjust the key follow, so that's at one, okay? So I'm gonna move it to one. I'm sorry, this is a fifth. I can do that so that it's three fourths. So you're not getting a full key follow or half, or in fact, even more than one. Get really interesting in harmonic stuff. But I'm gonna leave it on one for now, just for the sake of it. If what you meant by key scaling good, um, meaning key following when it comes to the filter. I don't know that the filter tracks perfectly to where you could run noise into it and then, um, you know, create sort of like an ice fields MS 2000 style patch. We could try that after we do dub station sound next. Anyways, let's pull up another sample here. Ooh, this one's kind of cool because it's like a violin sound. But I'm going to bring the chorus.
course, way up. It's almost got like a uh, little bit of a vocal sound to it. And so for that reason, um, I forgot, can we do, uh, I know we can't use the, uh, so this is a good way for myself to a little reminder here. Um, this little PCM line shows you what you can and can't do to PCM stuff. And so since this is controlling the uh, pitch here, we actually can use a pitch envelope on this. So I'm gonna just put LFO mode to positive, right? Nothing's happened yet because we haven't really done a lot with the LFO for the upper. So LFOs are common to the upper two tones or the lower two tones. So in this case, we're gonna go common select LFO and adjust the rate. And we also need to adjust the, what is it, level? Pitch mod. Nope, that's not it. I need to find the, what is it? The, so I've got the LFO mode. There is a pitch amount somewhere on this guy. I always forget where it is. Do, 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 do. It's here. Someone shout it out in the chat. <laughs> LFO, nope, that's, oh, wait, wait, that's uh, not what I'm looking for. LFO, des pitch depth, there it is. There it is, so yeah, LFO depth. LFO D, I was thinking LFO destination, it's LFO depth. So let's just bring the rate down a bit. All right, so now we've got four um, interesting partials to work with. So let's move down here. I'm not gonna do too much, but I just wanted to, actually I'll deselect everything and make those decisions. But let's unmute everything and then come up with our balance. So what we have is. Dubstation says the TS-1012 has six oscillators that you can have key track or not with a bunch of cool wavetables for some effects layers. Yeah, no, I mean, the TS-10, we were talking about that earlier. It's just awesome. TS-12, you know, really want to get my hands on one of those one day, but, you know. As you can see behind me, there's already way too, way, way too many synthesizers. So first thing is, is that sort of violin-y layer is too loud. So let's bring that down. And we need to tighten up the attack as much as I liked it. Maybe that, what was it, partial two, I think? Let's bring the course of that up a little. just to kind of get it to blend in better. And then we'll see up here. Okay, so I think a big thing that the sound is missing is it needs some more movement with the actual amplitude envelope. Because right now it's sounding way too static and there's not a lot we can do about it because we have no way to apply any filter to it. So we're actually gonna select all of the partials and shape them, uh, I'm sorry, except for the first partial because the first partial, remember, is those wavetables that come in later. So we're going to apply a little more attack. We can control the release and we're gonna add some decay, but make sure that level two is down. So, oh, actually make sure levels three and four are down as well. That way we can control the decay time here with time two.
And we should fade in those. We'll maybe take a little bit more time. And then we can bring level three or the last level up a little, right? We can bring these two up a little and kind of get a little bit of movement in there so it's not completely dead. So let's see what this sounds like. So you can hear there's some more in there later on. Going back to partial one, why don't we fade that in a little quicker? Let's get it out of there though. Make sure this, these are down for this guy here. There we go. There we go. I like how it has a like sort of little extra something in there and make sure that's right too. All right, so, but we could probably bring that one down a bit too. It doesn't need to be so crazy. Not too thrilled with the BG-1000, not my thing. Well, it is one of those things where it's a little bit intimidating when you first see it. It's, um, the best Roland could do to try to make it to where this type of synthesis was possible. And the LA synthesis from the Roland D50 definitely is kind of on that edge of between traditional analog synthesis, which is like super... Um, complicated at first if you're not used to it, but once you get used to it, you're like, oh, okay, this feels great. I know exactly what every single knob does, and I can get to a really nice, warm sound quickly. With this, you've got a lot more going on, and so they were trying to make it as easy as you could get, and as you could see, you know, I forgot for a second where the um, pitch depth was for the LFO. It is a lot, but once you get used to it, it's, um, I think it's worth having in your uh, toolbox. So I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'm going to turn the pitch up of these two. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I meant these two, but it's actually kind of cool sounding what happened. Wow, that's actually ended up better. I'm going to add just a little bit more attack to that. Really cool. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Vulture Culture, that is not the best sound I've ever heard you make. We're not done. <laughs> we're going to go to Common Select, and we're going to add some chorus to this, and I think that's going to do a lot to the sound, okay? Um, because it's not until you start adding EQ, chorus, and the reverb of the D50 that you start to get that sound. You sort of have to start a little bit weird to get there. All right, immediately I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna increase the depth because remember, we don't have a lot of pitch modulation. These wavetables feel really static. And so having a little bit more than I would normally use is probably okay. Maybe we'll even try type two, which I think is warblier. sounds really good. I think it could use a boost to the high end. So let's just try that real quick and try to get that to have a little bit more polish at the top end. Already much 
better <laughs> you know like we're getting there immediately the sound went from being kind of like dry and boring even though it has so much going on to being like that reverb or the uh, chorus is doing a lot And that EQ is really great too. I'm really into that. Now what we need is a big chorus. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the um, the uh, rev type and balance. I'm gonna bring in some rev balance and the rev type. Why don't we go for, uh, I love a big cross delay. So why don't we go for 24 here? It's one of the only things you really need the manual for sitting around. Let's go, change my mind, let's go big hall, that's patch three. Let's try that. Bad notes. <laughs> um, that big hall has a little bit, wait, 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 I thought it was. All of a sudden, those wavetables in the background sound really uh, gorgeous. So let's just... Yo, I mean, come on. All right, so just like that, and I I'm, appreciate everybody hanging around who was able to stomach the little beginning of that sound where it was kind of like, uh, what's he doing? Because all of a sudden, it, that's the thing that's so great about the Roland D50 and the PG-1000 is it goes from being kind of like, uh, wow, this kind of is a little boring, a little, you know, whatever. Uh, and instead it's just, you know, it just gets beautiful all of a sudden. So we need to write this patch. Um, so real quick, I'm going to go to on the D50. Sorry, it is off camera, but patch edit and then hit the name and then just write in here. We will call this one, uh, we're going to call this one planet. So let's go ahead and find uh, P L A N E T. Where is it? There we go. Move that over so that we can skip one and we'll call it planet gum. And I'm sorry this is off camera, but I want to make sure you guys got a really good shot of the PG-1000 tonight. Uh, some people were saying when I did this last time, like, hey, it was kind of tough because you couldn't really see as well as we would have liked. And I think that is important that you guys can see the actual programming. So I'm going to go ahead and hit right and press enter. And now we've got that sound. So if I go to uh, this sound from the beginning... That's the Polaris Plux patch, and now we've got Planet Scum, which sounds like this. And I love how there's that little push at the end, too. It's a little bit different. Um, oh, would you mind starting your next example of the preset patch and take it from there? I will do that after I do Dubstation's uh, idea because he got his in earlier. 
Um, let's see. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then I would love to, but I will say this, um, Walter, the thing about the D50 is it's tough. It's tough to, um, to figure out as like Euro DJ said, uh, at the beginning of the stream, one of the things is, is these are motorized faders. So you don't always know where something is. And so it's harder this is much easier to come up with your own sounds is really not that difficult. I think that anybody who's used to synthesis could pick this up pretty quickly. It's not that bad. Just watch my video on it and you'll get it after three hours. Um, I know it's a long time, but it's better than reading the manual like I had to do. Um, but when you want to tweak sounds and stuff, that's where it gets a little difficult because there's four partials and common parameters that are common to certain partials, but not others. So it can be a little bit tricky. Um, so anyways, let's see, what was it? I think it was a chord stab. This is Dubstation Zero asked, can we get a chord stab that has some free running LFOs or looped envelopes so you get some movement and variation in the stabs? Yes, we can. So I just want to make sure when I think of a stab, I think of something that's like, duh, and then kind of fades out, right? I know that was really stupid, but you know what I mean, Dub? Um, so when you're talking about like the LFOs having some movement, do you want that to happen like while you're holding it down, like there's like a residual effect of holding down the keys? Or am I misunderstanding? You just want some movement happening in the stab itself. That way, each time you hit the stab, um, it's different. So I guess that would be my question. Do you want the stab to be different every time or do you want it to be where when you hold down the keys, you get kind of weird free running LFO stuff going on in the background? Um, and then I'm going to do Walter's, which is we will, Walter, why don't you let me know what patch you want me to dissect? Cause I'd love to do that. Um, that would be a lot of fun to do. But what we can do is we can move on to a new, Preset patch, go to key mode and change that to dual. And now we are back to our preset, um, our preset, so it's piano sound. Uh, Dubstation says, it seems like getting a patch from the controller would be a better idea than the PG-1000. You could, yes, you could, um, you could absolutely wire a D50 into controller and get the current knob position. So that's a way that you could sysx dump into it. And I've seen that with controller. It's easy to do where you just get the patch loaded in so that you can actually see what's going on. Because if you spend the time to get used to the Roland D50, even if you're using the, the cloud version or the VST, it's exactly the same. Once you get used to looking at this panel, you can see what's happening. Just like... I think for a lot of people, the first time they looked at an analog synthesizer with a bunch of knobs, they were like, I have no fucking idea what any of this shit does, right? But a lot of you guys who watch this channel can look at any synthesizer that comes out nowadays and look at it and go, I know exactly what everything does here, right? The D50's architecture is a little more complicated, six stage envelopes. You've got partials, four partials, two tones, you know, all this stuff going on. Um, but what, again, once you get used to it, it's really about the same. It's not much more complicated than using anything else. And it's a lot of fun to control it all directly from this panel. Um, from one strike to the next strike. Okay, that's all I needed to know to get going. So we're going to start with common select and set the structure to 1-1, one, one, right? Yes, so that is using synthesis on all four partials. Then we're going to go to part balance here and bring it to 50-50. Right? So those are the two things you needed to do to the common select. Then we'll go to all four of the partials and set the key follow to one. That way we can actually play all of them and increase the cutoff frequency and the level to 70. So cutoff frequency all the way and the level to 70. And we should hear. We have a lot of square waves, right? So we need to do the same thing. What we could do is why don't we, before we even do anything else, let's go partial by partial and. Let's mute everybody but the first one. And what we're going to do is adjust the course tuning uh, for the second partial, sorry. And we'll just make sure we're only hearing that one. And we're going to just bring that up from C3. And we're going to bring that up to E flat or D sharp. 
right? So that would be a minor third up. Little music theory here, guys. Don't freak out. Then we're going to mute that and unmute partial three. Select partial three or the first partial of the upper. And that should move over to G. So that's the fifth up, right? And then our last one is going to probably be A sharp, I'm assuming. So let's mute that. And so we've got A sharp here, and we will go up to A sharp third. So, right? So now that we've tuned that to a minor seventh chord, we can unmute all of them, and we should hear... That type of uh, stab type of sound. Um, yes. Uh, let's see. Soundtrack would be interesting to add, modify, or also have a low partial or loop. Absolutely, Walter. So that's what we'll do. We'll pull up soundtrack and we'll try to see what we can do. Um, uh, I'd, I'd be interested in doing whatever one you want to do, Walter, uh, and that sounds like a perfectly good one. Now, I don't know if you can see it on the panel here, but you ac actually can see, because we were adjusting the pitch, that it says G2, D sharp 3, G3, A sharp 3. So we've got what the tunings are. Anyways. So we've given ourselves a little bit of a chord to play with. Another thing we could do is take... Um, partials two and four and just detune them by about 10 positive and partial three and detune it by about 10 negative. And now we're going to have a much thicker sounding chord. Just a little bit more to give it some movement. Now, because the notes aren't clashing, like they're not all the exact same note, you don't get the phasing in the same way. So we could potentially take it further, but for now that should be good. Um, Let's go ahead and move the waveform. Uh, let's select all of these and move the waveform to saw. Never mind, change my mind. Let's go back to square and we're going to use um, PWM LFO select positive one. So all that's saying is that the phase of the LFO is going to be positive and we've selected LFO one. Now, as you'll remember, that the LFOs are common to the Tones. Okay, so we've got an upper and lower tone. And so what we need to do is common select upper and lower. We can edit them at the same time because we want them to do the same thing. And we're just going to adjust the rate of uh, that. Oh, and I forgot to adjust the PWM depth, so I need to increase that about 50%. 62 is going to work, but we should be able to hear something now. Torben, welcome to the stream. Um, so, we could do some interesting free roaming LFO stuff, but we actually don't need to yet. We can get more complicated, but I just want to get a little bit of PWM happening. I think that sounds good. Um, maybe we'll add a little bit more PWM to all of these guys. And then increase the rate a little getting a little bit more chaos, a little bit more to the sound there. But we haven't fucked with the filter yet. That's where we're going to get interesting, hopefully. Um, so let's see. Um, we've kind of covered what we want to do with the waveforms over here. We could do some stuff like having the pulse width be affected by velocity. Um, oh, whoops, I was on common select. So if I go back over here, we can actually increase that a bit. And on low velocities, we'll get normal pulse width. But on higher ones, maybe we may bring that all the way up here. You can hear you can thin it out. For this sound, or we could go negative. So when I hit quietly, you get soft. Or if I hit hard, Really kind of crazy. I'm going to, I think I am going to use the PWM velocity, but I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to make it so it's not so crazy. So you actually get a thinner sound 
as you go. So negative PWM velocity, something super cool that you could do on the Roland D50 that wasn't available on a lot of the synths of the time. Uh, so again, just like another little trick uh, to the sound. So what, what else do we need to do? Well, we could worry about the filter in a second, but why don't we set up the envelope first that way we have some sort of uh stab shape like dub station was saying so the first thing we need to do is bring uh level two all the way down and then we can control the decay time with time two and add some release so oh we need to bring all the uh sustain levels down there we go probably a little bit more of a stab right I think for now that's okay. Something like that is a good starting point. Dub, let me know if you want it to be a little longer or shorter, because I don't know if you want to run this into separate effects or something, um, just, you know, for the sake of it. So now what we could do is get more, uh, more sexual with the sound, make it more interesting. So let's bring the cutoff frequency down. Bring the resonance up. Now, even though it's digital, the resonance on the synth actually sounds really good. So somewhere around there sounds cool. Right? It's got kind of an interesting sort of uh, sound to it. But we need to add some more stuff to it because it's, it's a little bit boring right now. Um, so let's go to... LFO select and move it to LFO 2. Now, you, remember, we're editing all of these at once, all four of these, but the D50 has three LFOs per tone, uh, per part, you can think of it. So with a total of six LFOs. So when we get into the free running stuff, uh, that'll be there. So... Right now, we're going to just use LFO2 on both of them, but we can change the rates and things independently. Um, so let's go ahead and make that a little slow. Going back over here, um, what do I need? Oh, LFO depth. Let's increase that all the way. Let's go into the rates here and adjust the rate. Turn these volumes up a little. Wow, yeah, it goes really slow, so we need to go faster than that. That was the problem, it was on LFO1, not LFO2. Now, that's with both of these being the same, but we can actually adjust just one and maybe slow that one down a bit. So now they're not gonna be in sync. And we can even go further, right? So if we only select partials two and three, we can then select LFO three and in increase the LFO depths on just those, right? Then go into lower and upper, upper and go to the um, rate of LFO three and get a different number. Right, and we can even change that so that the highest one, or I'm sorry, for the upper here can have a slightly different rate than the other one. Yeah, yeah, we're on track, right? So we're getting some. Getting some complex motion. Uh, I was going to turn down the resonance and the LFO depth uh, making this sound because I was like, well, I'm just trying to emphasize it so you guys can hear what I'm doing. But honestly, it sounds really good. I don't really need to fuck with it. It's sounding really nice. Um, and we don't need to use any envelope depth, really. I think it sounds better with the LFOs controlling it. Um, so now we actually have, for if you're keeping up with what I'm doing here, we're using uh, four different LFO times to control that filter, 
right? And we're using LFO1 just to control the PWM of all four of the partials, right? Uh, do I have all partials now? Yes, so you're hearing all the partials. I like how you sometimes get something that sounds like a pluck and sometimes you get something that's more of a wah type sound, but you... <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. You get something different every time, which is what Dub was asking for. So now we can go back to these partials and just tune the uh, cutoff frequency if we want to make it a little darker. So that's a cutoff of around 40. I think that sounds pretty cool. Or you could go more up and get kind of a brighter thing. But I think it sounded better down here around 40. Does anybody else remember the intro to, I forgot what song it is from Incubus, but it's like a really swirly guitar sound. Yeah, something like that. So, uh, oh, Chase time. Oh, God, I didn't even think about that. We could introduce Chase. That would go uh, insane. Um, yeah. So, yeah, why don't we, now that we've kind of got a good sound going, right, um, let's go into the common select. So, first off, we can adjust the low and high EQ. So, the first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of boost to the high end. just to help it cut through a little bit more um, because I think that's good. <laughs> then we will uh, add some chorus just a little bit. I don't even really want too much because it was sounding great on its own. Am I crazy? I mean, I'll set it however you want, Dub, but uh, I kind of like it with a little bit less chorus. I think it has like more purity that way. So just a very small amount, you know, two of 100 or whatever this goes up to. Yeah, up to 100. So two of 100. So completely dry with two. Maybe I don't even notice anything. That's okay. Let's go ahead and bring the reverb balance way the hell up. Um, and then we will pick what patch we're looking for. So we want to delay. We could go to 13, so that's cross delay of, what is that, 200 milliseconds. This sounds pretty good, actually. Um, what else? We could do 14 is cross delay of, uh, and I think it's different settings for the left and the right. Oh, I think that's where it's at. Whoa. Isn't that beautiful? Like, what a cool sound. It's just like... That's it, you know? I might add just a little bit more high gain, just to... And I can adjust the total volume here, just bring it down a little bit. Now, you'll notice that as I play those higher notes, we're losing some of the sound. So I'm just gonna go in here and adjust the um, key follow a bit and just bring it up so we get a little bit. Just halfway. I'm actually going to bring the cutoff down a little bit because the key follow has increased that. Yeah, it's just a very small amount, maybe even... Just that one percentage point was enough to change the sound. It was getting a little too close the filter a little more. Yes, sir.
Yeah, so I like it. I think that's pretty good. Got to put a good reverb on it, not the D51. It's so, like, prototypey. Yeah, so the thing about the D50 reverb chip, and then I was looking at the schematics for this thing. It actually does have a, a discrete chip just for the reverb, but there's no modulation in the reverb taps. So what that means is we're kind of familiar with, like, the Lexicon 224 method of digital reverb because it was one of the earliest ones where... To make the reverb not sound metallic, they move the taps around. So you get some chorusing that's happening. But beyond that, more than chorusing, what it does, it just stops it from becoming metallic. And the reverbs in the D50 are pretty metallic. So uh, as much as I like the sound of the D50, and it's like if you don't notice the metallic, it's not so bad. Um, but sometimes it is so bad. So that's a thing uh, worth uh, checking out here. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and write the name. So I'm going to just go to patch edit. Again, uh, sorry that I'm off camera here. Go to name. And I'm going to write uh, dub. Let's see here. And we're going to write in dub. Do, do, do. Forgot where I was in the alphabet. Um, go back here. I don't like where I was going with that. I call this one dub. Do, 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 do. We're just getting there. Oop. Missed a, missed a letter. Do, do, do. This would be a great time while I'm, I'm uh, doing this to get some more requests in. Oh, Walter wanted to pull apart. Uh, we'll pull apart uh, the next patch here. So let's go ahead and hit. Uh, where's the right button? There it is. Boom. Boom. All right. So that one's called Dub Stargate. So that's enshrined in our sounds that we've made. I think it's great. I'm not saying it's the greatest ever, and perhaps you could do something just as cool with other synthesizers, but I actually think it's pretty neat and uh, super into that, so... Lots of fun getting different sounds every time you hit the key, you know. That makes it sound very organic. Um, uh, it's just part of the character, uh, the metallic sound, Torben says. Mind it says, some of the analog synth patches on the H card really lean into the reverb. Sometimes it works, but more often than not, it doesn't. Yeah, it's the funniest thing is if you listen to the reverb on its own, it's like not good. But nine times out of 10, when I listen to a patch, I'm like, this sounds amazing. So, you know, I think with the right amount of chorus and detune going into the sound, you sort of end up with something that sounds okay anyways, you know, that's the cool thing about the D50. Um, but Fantasia without the original reverb doesn't work either. Uh, Torben says, that's true. It's like, that's part of the sound. So, um, you know, it's kind of a funny thing about that. Um, Torben says, this sound will again be, hardly be matched by any other scent, especially analog. Yes, it's sort of, you know, you sort of have to always uh, go with that. So I'm going to go to uh, internal. Does anybody remember off the top of their head which bank soundtrack is in? I think it's on, I always lose it. Is it uh, bank, bank five? I think it's bank five. Where are we here? Come on, baby. No, maybe it was bank four. Maybe I'm totally stupid. Maybe it's just in the first few. Marco strings. My my seventh button's a little fucked up. D50 voices. Digital native dance. Combo strings. Come on, daddy. Let's get there. Fuck. Someone shout it out in the chat. You got to know. Do, do, do. Soundtrack, got it. Still like the best sound ever, right? Um, 
Oh, hey, Xander, how's it going? And uh, Autumn, I hope you have a great night. Get some good sleep, okay? You're making that money. Congratulations on that promotion. I'm so proud of you. It's awesome. Three seven. Thank you, Walter. Sorry about that. But yeah, listen to the reverb. You start to hear those like discrete echoes and the sort of ringing of it, but um, for me, I think it is just super cool. So anyways, why don't we just start by muting some partials and we'll just start with the upper partial here and see what we've got with just one. Oh, that is so fascinating. Wow, I never would have guessed. There's like a little lift to it, right? The pitch mod, there's a pitch envelope on that. So immediately something really cool that I never would have guessed about that sound. Like when I tried to recreate the soundtrack sound on the JP8000, I was like, yeah, it's not quite there. I didn't do anything like that. bit of vibrato on what sounds like pulse wave. This is on partial two here. It's interesting. So the upper partial, by the way, on the synth is uh, labeled mellow tones. And so the upper partials together sound like But one of the things I'm noticing about this upper partial, beyond just how stupid gorgeous it sounds, is that there seems to be some bias going on to the shape of it. So I wonder if that's controlling the filter or not. Um, here's another thing we could do. We could go into the common select up here and let's just turn the reverb off real quick. just so we can kind of get a clearer picture of what's going on. So back to the uh, first partial of the upper tone. It stops, interestingly. Um, so let's mute that and go to the second partial, or why don't we start with the first partial of the lower tone. That's so interesting. I never would have guessed that it would have this little pitchy start thing Interesting, very interesting. Um, and then so we'll probably have the last part will be kind of a mirror of that. Yeah, the partial alone is just a nice patch in and of itself, mind idiot says, it's so true. Um, yeah. Uh, let me see real quick to get to the meow. Um, PWM, I see over here, pulse width mod. We can control the velocity. We control it with aftertouch. We can control it with the LFO. Um, but I don't believe we can use an envelope to control that. I could be wrong, but I don't believe that's a thing you can do. Um, controlling it, like you can on some synths. Like I know on, I had the Korg Prologue and you could route an envelope to the PWM. I'm, I know I'm blanking on a synth you can do that with off the top of my head right now. Um, but I think it's not that. It's so interesting. So if I mute these two and I only use one in one of each of the partials, That is just so crazy to me. So, anyways, that's um, accidental BTTF. Sorry, what does that mean? I don't know. Um, so, what I want to do now, if it's okay with you guys, if you'll be so kind, is to allow me to go back in here. We got Planet Scum. <laughs> 
which sounds very different than digital native dance, but sort of uses that idea of using wavetables like that. Patch number, then we've got the dub Stargate. Right, super cool. Why don't we make a new patch, and this time, why don't we try our most pathetic best to do something... Um, yo, what's up, Mighty Pinto? How's it going, my friend? Um, to do something like soundtrack, to see if we can kind of create something close. And if we get too close, we'll fuck it up and make it different, but I have a feeling that I am no Eric Persing and that it won't get there all the way. Um, so the first thing to do is we have, of course, on this new blank patch, we have uh, to set the structure to one and one on the upper and lower and the part balance to 50-50. Then we need to go into our partials and increase the cutoff and bring the level to... And you'll notice that depending on what note I play, yeah, Dub Stargate was super cool. Uh, that was Dub Station, uh, his request, so a lot of fun for that. Um, oh, I didn't mean to play the opening three notes of the Back to the Future theme. Yeah, that's hilarious. I don't know it off the top of my head. Great movie, but it's been forever since I've seen it. So we need to just go into key follow and make sure that all uh, everything is key following. So, Right? Um... So now the first thing I'm going to do is just go to the upper select and on upper key shift, we're going to just bring that up seven. So what that's going to do is just give us that fifth thing. Oh, and I need to put the uh, key mode of the synth into dual. And now, now we can hear uh, that we have a fifth on whatever note we hit. super cool just to shorthand and get a little bit uh quickly there so now what i'm going to do is do the filter stuff and the release stuff um because there was still filter movement on those parts there so first off i will add some pwm velocity here so if on a low note it's really thick and on a high note it's a little bit thinner right maybe not even use so much but just a little bit so low and high, uh, let's use a little more. I want it to be super expressive. I'm not gonna be able to recreate soundtrack, guys. I'm not Eric Persing, but I'm gonna try to make it beautiful. Yeah, just a little bit of something in there, and we'll do some with the uh, aftertouch too, so. So we can use aftertouch to add some movement. PWM select, why don't we select LFO one and increase the PWM depth and then go into common select and adjust the rate there. I think that's good. Back to partial select and adjust the PWM depth down a little bit. We're just getting a little bit of variation to the sound, getting it to be a little less static. All right, so the big thing is going to be increasing the release time. So that's time five, real easy. Uh, might be a little much. 65. Someone sounds, somewhere around there sounds good. Um, so then the next thing we need to do is to bring the cutoff down. I'm going to put key follow, before I even pick a frequency, I'm going to bring key follow up. And then I'm also going to increase envelope velocity um, by about 50%. I don't want it to be too crazy. And then the after range, I like putting that all the way up to plus seven on patches because it just makes it so when you lean into the synth, you really get some movement there. So now the reason I did that beforehand is you'll notice that when you uh, parameters like that, uh, I'll increase the envelope depth all the way to uh, parameters like that can affect what cutoff frequency you would pick. So sometimes it's smart to move those parameters first before you move the cutoff frequency. So.
let's go ahead and bring level one all the way up, time one all the way down, time two to somewhere in the middle and bring the all of these to the bottom here. Yeah, there we go. So it's all. Something like that time sounds good, but we need to increase the resonance a lot. I don't want it to be too shrieky. Right? So. Right, but we're kind of a little static there. So what we need to do is increase uh, levels three and four a bit and increase times three and four. I'm actually going to um, kind of leave the times about the same, but actually bring level three up and then the sustain level back down. So it should fall and then bring up a little and then come back down just so we get a little movement. Oh yeah, that went way too fast. So we just need to increase the time here. You see, it just like gives it a little bit of something. A little sum sum, you know what I'm talking about. DJ fuzzed out. <laughs> Right. That sounds pretty good. Now, the trick is that makes the soundtrack sound kind of like what's going on with it is adjusting um, the time of the am uh, amplifier. So even though the filter's falling, we want to shave off some of the front end of that. I'm going to go and adjust the pitch of all of these up to, by the way, just to see... Four, maybe. I think it just needs to go up a note. We need to add some uh, release here, too. Increase the decay time. We're getting there. It's a little rough still. Um, one thing we could do is say, select just the second partials and detune them a bit. Or actually in this case, because they're going to only be sustaining, I'm going to do one up 10 and one down 10. See how that sounds. might even be a little extreme. I mean, it sounds beautiful, but I want to keep it kind of true to soundtrack, which is a little tighter tuning. Now that I think about it, we could probably do a little something with these guys too, where we bring these uh, either up five and I'll bring this one down five. Now we should have... I hate to say it, I kind of like the uh, the tuning uh, being a little bit more intense. So I'll bring it down to 10 and plus 10. Fuck it. It sounds like something got a little out there. Nope, it's just... Wow, that's annoying. shave a little bit more of the front off. I need to do that on all the partials.
somewhere around there is sounding good. I know it's taking a bit to get those uh, sounding right. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, now that we've kind of set up the sound... Somewhat, what we'll do is we are going to mute partials to... Oh, wait, that was, I think, where I got off. We had some muted partials. Anyways, we're going to mute partials, the second partial of lower and upper, right? And so we can just adjust only the first partials, and we're just going to make them really short, the Amplitac. Um, we're going to bring the levels on just these guys all the way down so we get that short... Right, and then what we want to do is actually add a little bit of pitch um, envelope mode. So what we're going to do is for these guys, go to the pitch envelope and put it to uh, positive, right? And what we need to do in the pitch envelope here is bring, um, sorry, I need to go to the common select because the pitch envelopes down here, um, I don't know well, I think you guys can see that, but basically anything in blue is common, right? And so now we need to just adjust By bringing it down, we get a little... See how we've gotten that little sound that we had, that we heard in the soundtrack patch, so... And I actually wonder if we took these and brought them up an octave, so we brought these up to C... Um, let's bring them up to C5, C right? And then bring this one up. Uh, yeah, that should be right. Right? Something like that. So let's unmute everybody and see what we have here. So we're starting to get there. I'm going to just select the little thing because it's a little extreme right now. To me, it almost sounds like when you bow an acoustic guitar, right? So less soundtrack because I'm not Eric Persing, but more something like that. Yeah, so really sounding good. Let's um, go ahead and go into common upper. Let's add a little bit of high end, right? That's gonna make it sound beautiful. But we need that low end too, we need that ass. And the way that the EQ works in the D50 is it actually compensates. So you can hear that as we've added low end, we've almost got more of a um, scoop sound because we've added some high and some low, so it's ducked out the middle more, which is pretty cool. Let's add some, re some chorus in here. Let's go ahead and... Really shimmery and beautiful. Um, so let's bring the balance down. Somewhere around 30 is that nice balance of like, I want to retain the clarity because you do lose some. Yeah, let me just play a little. Yeah, it's sounding, sounding pretty good. Um, but, uh, yeah, so pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring, uh, some reverb in. That's important. And we'll just pick, um, the reverb type to be a large hall, which is patch three.
We could try um, 18, which is large cave. That's a very big space. Yeah, sounds pretty good, actually. Um, let's see. I think those first partials are still a little out, so let's go ahead and bring those down further. There we go. Yeah, so is it soundtrack? No, not at all. But I'm actually surprised at how close we got, you know, for considering. It's in the ballpark. Uh, maybe a little bit more chorus would be nice just to break it up a little bit. Increase the chorus depth a bit. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what I'm trying to do. Um, uh, let's go fix that real quick. And then let's just bring the balance up, maybe to 40 and increase the depth a bit. That got, that got crazy fast. That wasn't great. Now that we have a little bit more, I just need more high end. I need it to cut through. So let's bring that up to seven and see what we get. I think it sounds really good. We could bring the frequency up a bit, maybe. Yeah, a little breathy, airy frequency up there at like 3.4. It's a little extreme. Let's bring the uh, gain back. A oh, yeah, just two. I think that sounds really great. Really awesome. Um, again, not soundtrack, but beautiful nonetheless. Um, Let's see here. Jesse Soto, welcome to the stream. Good evening, Vulture Culture. I am an Alpha Juno 1. This would benefit my classic synth. Yes, I'm a big fan of the Juno series. Um, big fan, for sure, of that analog synth. Euro DJ says, it's probably a first VA synthesizer, if only the... Um, it probably is the first virtual analog synthesizer if you only use uh, synthesis and synthesis structure. That is correct. Um, it In the sense that if you... Take virtual analog to mean analog-ish stuff done virtually. Um, when I was looking in on the definition of that word, what the consensus I read was that virtual analog is more or less a marketing term created by Nord and Virus to refer to synthesizers that do under the hood, hood <laughs> the herd, um, virtual analog stuff but they do it with a bunch of knobs and stuff. So that's where this maybe wouldn't, even though you get the knobs and faders here. Um, that's up to everybody to decide. So what other sounds could I do for you guys? This would be a great time in the chat to drop something that you guys would like for me to, uh, a type of sound to make. Um, I think I got time for one more uh, cool patch to make during this stream. So if anybody has any ideas while I write this in, um, uh, let's go ahead and go to patch edit name. And we're just going to call this one. Let's see if I can type this in. Boom. Wish. I. Was. Eric. <laughs> there we go. That's a good name. What a good name right there. All right. And then we just go to write. Just write that bad boy. Uh, yes. Just want to make sure I wasn't overwriting soundtrack. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, here's a quick edit. I want to reduce the key following here uh, down to maybe... 
uh, half key following and see how that changes the sound because it's a little bright at the top end. That was a little much. Let's bring it up to three fourths. Let's try splitting the difference there for five eighths. Yeah, that's about right. So I can just edit that. Um, all you have to do is just write and then enter, and then it's overwritten that. Uh, so DJ fuzzed out. Um. <laughs> Mind idiot. Upper partial, Eric. Lower partial, Persing. That's hilarious. Um. Mind idiot says something rough with ring mod. Easy street. So uh, we're going to move on to... The last patch in this bank, and we're going to go to common select here, and then we're going to structure two, which is synthesis plus synthesis with ring mod, right? Part balance, we're going to bring it up, right? And then what we're going to do is go into our partials, key follow one, right? That's useful. Do, 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 do. and then bring the level so that we can hear all of them on the synth key mode and move that over to dual. In fact, it's one of the only times I use the joystick. It's easier to do it that way. Everything should be kind of... There we go. Uh, that should be everything. And what we can do is hear uh, what's going on with the ring mod. So why don't we just mute partials one and one. So we should be hearing just the ring mod now. And we're going to bring the levels up on those. Which is kind of frustrating that the way it works, the ring mod's like really quiet. That's one complaint I have about this synth, unless I'm misunderstanding something. But what we're going to do is edit we're going to edit partials one and by adjusting the tuning of that we can sort of get some FME type stuff out of this actually you can hear that low bass that's crazy So you can hear that by using the ring mod, we could actually use this to create like a DX7 E piano type tone, right? You know, I set one of these guys to around here. So we have that kind of kind of bell tone. And then with the other one, we could go even higher and use that for like a tine, right? And so that might be a fun patch to do. But I'm going to leave it here. A5 sounds really cool. And I'm, I'm, maybe we'll even change it on this other one here, too. Right. Um, it's two squares that are almost identical, isn't it? Yes. So we're just using the rate of one to affect the amplitude of the other uh, squares. We could do it with uh, saws, but I think this sounds kind of good how it is. <laughs> um, and of course, we could adjust like sort of like a little bit of, uh, um, if we want to just detune uh, just one of these a bit. Just to give it a little bit more something to the sound, you know. definitely have a little bit of that. Now, that's a little extreme, right? But what I like about it is it's keeping a little bit of coherence. If we bring back in one and one of these partials, we're gonna hear them and they're gonna be out of key, right? Instead of it just affecting the sound, right? Which is pretty cool. 
So for now, I want to just leave it like that, but let's see if we can do some PWM on these squares and just see what happens. I don't fucking know. So we're going to just select P, uh, alpha 1, PWM to about 60%, common upper and affect the rate. If I'm not stupid, that's not doing anything, right? I'm not hearing anything. I don't think there's any difference there. I think my mouth was just ho hanging open like an invalid. Um, let's see what happens if we adjust the PWM on these guys. So let's bring the PWM up. Whoa. Oh, so that's super cool. So by adjusting the PWM on, I'm going to call it the, the carrier wave, even though it's not FM, we can get some serious distortion. And then going again back up in here, we control the rate there. Going to the carriers, we can also just adjust the pulse width. It's interesting, by filtering out most of the pulse width, you sort of get the original, you get it, clean it up a bit. But that's an option there. Pretty cool that you can do that. Um, so now what we can do is fuck around with the uh, filter a bit. So let's increase the envelope depth. Envelope velocity, a little bit of key follow here. We'll do maybe, uh, we'll do half. Increase some resonance. and then adjust the times here and bring level one all the way up, level two, three, four, and five all the way down. What am I hearing here? But it's interesting that even with the... Oh, no, we can't bring it all the way down. Good. Really cool, distorted type of bell fucking thing. By increasing release, which is time five, to the amplifier and the filter. Come on. Oh, I see what's happening. This is funny. So I need to do that on all of these or else it's not going to work. You can hear some weird shit going on in the background. Wow, it's crazy up here. It kind of gets clean and like... <laughs> it like almost becomes beautiful, like just FM synthesis up here. <laughs> That's so funny. I never would have fucking guessed. Um, so even though I was trying to make something nasty, and it is nasty down here... Up top, it just turns into DX7, like... <laughs> um, really crazy. Hey, Lemon, you hanging out with us? Can I get some lemons in the chat? Lemon's uh, over here. 
He usually doesn't hang out with me during the stream. You want to say hi to everybody, Lemon? You want to just have a quick little, little hello real quick? Good girl. Who's a good girl? Can we see the blind kitty? You'll see she's got one big blue eye. And then the other one's missing. And she can't see out of the big blue eye. Good girl, Lemon. Thank you for letting me pick you up. DJ fuzzed out, making the sounds that attracts the pussy. Um, yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's just uh, kind of crazy. So we need to add some uh, chorus and reverb to that, of course. Um, so let's go to up, common select, lower and upper, and then add some chorus. Just a bit, you know, we can try a few different types, like maybe the dimension chorus. That's like pro probably the most transparent, but it can get a little squared off when you increase the depth and the rate a bit too much. And then let's go ahead and add some reverb. I'm going to crank it up a bit at first. Let's try our large hall real quick just to see. Kind of turns it into a... Um, kind of like a church bell. We could try some of the weirder ones, like why don't we try Long Gate? You know how it just cuts off like that, and kind of going up here, we could get... Kind of weird sound, sound design-y type stuff. Um, we could also try with that cross delay that was so good. I really do like patch 14. We've got another cross delay, 24. Let's try that one out. There it is. Oh my god, I love that sort of like almost eighth notes, eighth notes type thing. All right, so I know we said this was going to be really hateful, but I want to adjust the key follow here. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. Oh, good, nothing changed because <laughs> I'm not using the uh, pitch depth. Key follow here and see if we increase this. There we go. So we've got some kind of hateful bells. Oh, you know what? I really think it sounded better when it was just kind of back where it was. funny how like sensitive it is yeah it's really crazy how I've kind of like lost where we were at oh I think part of it is I don't want to affect this cutoff so I'm going to just leave that all the way up and just affect the cutoff on these guys Yeah, that's the trick is the cutoff needs to be all the way open down there. Now, here's something interesting that I haven't used yet. Um, sounds like Silent Hill music, greatest compliment a synthesis could ever get. Um, but I haven't used this yet because I haven't really had to. But the I love like where the filter and the key follow is right now. Um, but the problem with it is that as we go up really high, we, we really lose volume. 
Oh, it's so gorgeous up there, too. Really one of the coolest patches so far. Um, yes, Mind Idiot, that um, three-hour Roland D50 tutorial video, that's the first thing you'll see in the description of this video, that is your one-stop shop to knowing everything there is to know about the Roland D50. Um, you'll see that I'm not like the master of this thing. I'm still, you know, stumble over which parameter to use sometimes when I'm live, right? But I cover every single fucking parameter in this synthesizer in that video. Um, so worth watching. Anyways, TVA, we need to set some bias so that we can actually increase the bias point. So I'm going to go to bias level here and increase it, um... Let's see what's going on if I do this. And the bias direction is greater than A1. And what we need to do is bring that up and then increase the bias level. Where am I going wrong here? All right, let's go negative 12 and see. What... And try and bias direction. Bring this down to like, I don't know. Okay, so that's killing it if I go up. So here's our idea. So we want to bring this up. There we go. So now I've killed everything. What I'm trying to do is find that point. There we go. So now we've got control over these low notes, but we've still got it up here. And it sort of fades out between C6 and C5 is invisible, right? So now all we have to do is balance that a bit. Sorry, that was a little confusing, but I had to refresh myself and just bring that bias level to be less extreme. So just even bringing it down negative three, we've got a lot more balance across. There we go. So just, I know it took a bit to set up that with bias, but by setting it up so that it fades out the volume from C6 to C5 and it gets lower so that this low end is controlled versus the difference here of the bias level being negative three or zero. That's pretty loud. That negative three just gets it in check. So those high end notes ring through beautifully. So I think that sounds really cool. Um, and so we're going to call this one. Uh, we'll call this one. So I'm going to just go to, uh, let's see, where is it? Patch edit name. And we'll call this one mind. Do, do, do. Mind. Do, do, do. Mind idiot. Do, 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 do. And we'll call this ring mod or mod. It ended up being a little bit, um, prettier than I meant it to be. So sorry about that. Um, but it was a cool exploration of what can be done with the, uh, with the ring mod. So I'm going to call this one mind idiot mod bells. There we go. And then I'm just going to go to right and press enter. Okay. So Oh, 
Oh, up here, it's so beautiful. And it's so interesting how it changes across the range. All right, wish I was Eric. Kind of uh, a little bit soundtracky. This is Dub Star Eight. Wow, that is such a great sound dub. Super great. Uh, then we got Planet Scum, sort of first sound we came up with this stream. Interestingly, it reminds me more of the Iceman preset from the JD-800, uh, for sure. Uh, Dubstar Gate is wonderful. It really is, though. Um, yeah, Ring Mod is underrated, and that's definitely... I used Ring Mod in the um, before Wave State patch that I did that sort of has like a pretty hate machine type vibe. Um, that was cool, too, but that was more kind of traditionally, you know, like hateful Ring Mod or whatever. Um, so for this one, I felt like it was a little bit more, um, just a little bit more like interesting or whatever I would, I would call that. So yeah, definitely a lot of fun doing this stream tonight. Um, real quick guys, I just wanted to mention the best way you guys can actually help support the channel, which is becoming a member. And all of the patches created tonight, and in fact, all of the patches I've ever made for the Roland D50, will be up for free um, for members. It's not up yet, because I want to finish it off and do a promo video for it and everything, and make it really awesome. Do like a big, long, maybe like, you know, just really get into playing those patches, no talking video to promo it. But anyways... Um, all of those patches are going to be free for members, but the really cool thing that you guys can get right now is all of my samples of this lovely machine, the Kawai R53. So this is a very rare, special drum machine that has that industrial drum sound. The American version of this, this is the Japanese-only release, but the American version is actually used by bands like Ministry, KMFDM, Front 242, and others, uh, Frontline Assembly, to get that sort of early industrial sound. And so I did the deepest sampling that anybody has done on this thing. Um, if you look online, you might find some patches, I'm sorry, some samples uh, for free or for like 10 bucks, and they are um, just like the 24 vanilla samples you get in this thing. But what really makes the sound of the Kwai R50 is how you process them with down tuning because it's got those 12-bit uh, digital artifacts that come in that give it that industrial distortion as well as like the flanger, the gate. There's all sorts of stuff that actually goes in to making a really cool drum sound with the R50 that you're not going to get if you just got some samples and down tuned them in your DAW or your hardware. So it's 249 one shot samples along with 36 drum loops and eight bonus polyvox bass lines. And I made a little ad here, so I'm just gonna play it real quick so you guys can see what it's all about. But the biggest thing I wanna say is, A, it's a way to say thank you, but B, it's completely free. You guys get it if you're members of the channel. If you wanna become a member, there should be a button that says join right below this video. It's a super cool thing to do. And you, not only that, you also get a vulture skull next to your name, which is a lot of fun in chat. But anyways, yeah, this is Diodes and Rust, the Kawaii R50 uh, sample pack.
So yeah, that's diodes and rust. Uh, hopefully you guys could hear that. I couldn't actually hear it on my end, so let me know if there was audio. Um, but yeah, I guarantee you, no one has gone as in-depth as I have with these drum samples, and that's a really cool thing. I want to create value for you guys. I don't want this uh, community that's given so much to me. I don't want to just like accept your money because you guys are great. I mean, I appreciate it. I'll take your money because I'm poor, because I've bought too many cents. But you know, the big thing is, is I want to be there for you guys and give you guys products that are great. So Diodes and Rust is a really cool product and uh, it's free for you guys. You guys could buy it too, it's 10 bucks, but it's cheaper if you become a member, and plus you get all the other cool stuff, the roll and D50 sounds when they come out, and of course we were checking out Inktomi last stream on the Quai K3, that's my new effect plugin, which will be vintage effects for vintage synths, that'll be coming out in the next couple of months too, maybe not a couple, next months. DJ Fuzz out, say next couple of months. We will see some effects. So anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for being amazing, being my friends. I hope you guys had fun tonight with the PG-1000 and the Roland D50. Love and light, bitches. I am out. Have a great one.